Hi, my name is Tash and I'm here today to talk to you about my experience as a complete beginner to plant identification. And when I say beginner, I really, really mean it. Um, at the start of 2023, I could probably point out an oak tree or a daisy to you, but my knowledge didn't go much further than that. Changed for me at the start of this year, though, um, when my friend James Harding Morris, who also happens to be the BSBI's country support manager, um, suggested that I attempt the personal challenge slash New Year's resolution of finding and identifying 100 plants in 2023. Um, this felt like quite an outrageous ambition at the time. Um, and I'm not sure I ever quite believed that I would reach that 100 mark. Um, but I very quickly got into the challenge. And as of October, I actually surpassed the 300 plant mark, something that felt unfathomable at the start of this year. So today I'm just going to share with you a bit about how I got started with identifying plants this year, what helped and what made things harder along the way and a bit about how this experience has been for me so far. Also going to share some pictures um, on the slides of various plants that I've seen this year as well. So I think getting started was probably the hardest part for me, partly because I was starting in January when it's already a challenge to get out of the house anyway. Um, but also I, I found it quite difficult to, to start paying attention to what was growing around me. Um, it took more energy than I expected to, yeah, to kind of get into that headspace. Um, there were two things that really helped though, when I was getting started. Um, the first was being able to go out for walks with someone who knew a lot more than me about plants particularly someone who is happy to point things out and explain them to me. And being able to do this in my local area, which is kind of suburban part of South Manchester, um, it meant that I could go back in my own time and revisit plants. Um, yeah, and, and spend a bit more time looking at them um, when I was out and about. The second thing that really helped was knowing what to look out for at that time of year. Um, sometimes James would send me pictures of plants that he'd spotted in his area that day or that week and this helped to kind of focus my attention a bit um, and created a real sense of achievement when I found a thing that I'd been out looking for. Um, as we slowly started to move a bit closer to spring and things became a bit more colourful, um, I started to kind of pick up the pace with the challenge a bit more and really enjoyed watching day by day as my local green spaces started to become a bit more colourful. This is the point in the year when I started to dip my toe a bit further into identification and tried to figure things out on my own a bit more. There were a few resources that I used to get started with this. The first was various infographics and crib sheets for different plant groups like ferns on walls and also things like violets and speedwells. I found sort of visual infographics really helpful and being able to compare um, things to what I was looking at. Yeah, that really helped me. Um, and also I used the flora of East Anglia website a lot again because it was very visual um, and just felt kind of easily accessible to me. Both of these resources posed a bit of a challenge for me though which was that if I didn't know roughly what the plant was that I was looking at, um, for example this opposite leaved golden saxifrage, I, if I did yeah and didn't know what that was at all it was really hard to kind of start that identification process using using those tools. There was also still quite a lot of language uh, that felt very new and challenging to me and it felt like quite a big leap to go from not knowing anything at all to trying to yeah, learn all of this new terminology. 
Luckily, at this point, I was gifted a secondhand copy of the Wildflower Key. And this helped me to start thinking about how I can identify something when I have no sort of rough idea of where where to start. Um, it took a lot of practice. I had a lot of false starts using this key. Um, and sometimes I would get so frustrated that I just kind of flick through the book really slowly, hoping to see a picture of something that looked like the plant I was trying to ID. Um, so yeah, a lot of frustration, a lot of kind of going around in circles with the key and just not ending up at the right place. But also some moments of great satisfaction as well when I did finally find the right thing and had kind of done that whole process on my own without any prior knowledge. Um, there's still a fair bit of language in that book that baffles me a bit, but I definitely feel like I've kind of built my confidence up a lot more. So the kind of end of spring and, and throughout the summer, I saw lots of amazing flowers and plants. Um, I reached my goal of 100 plants at the start of May. And by the end of June, I'd reached 200 plants and saw lots of yeah beautiful things along the way. Um, one thing that I particularly enjoyed was finding this plant on the left on just my regular walk local walk that I, I do before work. Um, and this plant I now know is a large leaved Avens, um, but this had not been recorded in my area before. So um, yeah, this then was my first foray into recording as well. So I diligently recorded this plant on iRecord. I also had the chance to see things like white Helleberines and fly orchids and burnt tip orchids and lots of other things in Bedfordshire when I was there on a work trip. And I think this um, this experience kind of turned on my orchid vision a bit because I then ended up stumbling upon things like southern marsh orchids and bee orchids and later on um, broad-leaved helleberines all in my kind of local green space when I was out walking my dog. And at this point, and it's something that, that has, you know, occurred to me many times along the way, I've just been, I guess, blown away by the fact that I've spent 30 years wandering around, um, just being completely oblivious to the amazing diversity and beauty and abundance of plant life that exists around me. Um, I genuinely never knew that orchids could look any different to the things that you can buy in pots at supermarkets. And I definitely didn't know that wild orchids were growing um, on various patches of land half a mile from my front door. Experiences like this have just astonished me this year. Um, and I feel really lucky that I've been able to bump into lots more amazing plants as I've been out and about just kind of doing my normal things. Um, I've been particularly aware throughout this year of how constantly changing the seasons are and it's felt like every time I've stepped outside my door there's been something new to see and learn about um, and I suppose it's it's kind of opened my eyes to the fact that I, I just haven't paid attention to the changing seasons before and um, particularly not in as much sort of detail and with as much awareness as I've felt I've had this year. So when we reached the start of October, I had got to 300 plants, which again felt impossible at the start of 2023. Um, and when autumn arrived, I would spend my daily walks along the River Mersey looking out for autumn crocuses that I knew grew in it around there. Um, I was also able to hunt down some Bibistine crocus, which is the one on the right, um, which were a bit further up river, uh, which I read about in, in an old blog post earlier on in the year.
throughout this year, I've often wanted to know what I should kind of be keeping my eyes open for. Um, I'm quite lucky in that there's a, an archive of blog posts by a local naturalist that, that highlights lots of species on, on my sort of specific patch. But when I've been visiting friends or on various trips, I've struggled to know where to go to find out what I should be looking out for. Um, and I've used things like iNaturalist, which have helped, but it's, it's often difficult to kind of filter that information to the right time of year. And I suppose I don't want to be missing out on opportunities to see things um, just because I'm not, yeah, I'm not aware that they exist there. Um, so we've reached December and my, um, my 100 plant challenges coming to an end. And I guess I'm just reflecting on the fact that I never imagined I would have this much fun, learn so much or see so many beautiful plants. And I also never thought that I would be mocked by my friends for being a plant nerd, which is what's going on in these photos here. Um, and I absolutely never thought that I would be speaking at a botany conference this year. Um, so yeah, this, this challenge has been a really successful kind of learning journey for me. And I think the reason that it was so successful is I wasn't trying to learn everything all in one go, which felt really intimidating. I was just trying to learn new plants as I encountered them one by one, which sounds very simple. Um, and it is, but that's why it works so well. And I guess that identifying plants has become a new lens through which I can create memories and experience places and it's just really enriched my year and as we head towards the end of 2023 I'm already excited for 2024 partly because next year will be full of many new and exciting plants to meet but also because I'll see lots of familiar plants as they emerge again and I think I just want to leave you with a final thought um, which is that this um, this learning process for me was only possible because I have a really supportive and knowledgeable um, and generous friend who was there to kind of support me and encourage me along the way. Um, but I feel like experiences like this could be facilitated and and delivered by organisations like BSBI to bring people like me into the world of botany, people who have a desire to learn, but just don't know where to start with things. Um, and I really hope that other people are able to go on this, go on this journey and experience these things as well. Um, thank you.